if it often seems that there is no level the Democrat-aligned media won't stoop to in order to promote its leftist agenda. Case in point has been the aftermath of the tragic mass shooting at a school in Parkland, Florida during which the media has heaped lavish praise and copious coverage upon advocate and training teenagers who demand stricter gun control measures be implemented. Along those lines, the Washington Free Beacon took note of a recent guest who was invited on MSNBC host Katie Turr's program, a grown man in Colorado who claimed to have been almost a school shooter when he was a high school student in the mid-1990s. That man is named Aaron Stark, and Turr read on air excerpts of an open letter he recently published which detailed his struggle with suicidal depression in his teenage years which included a fascination with weapons. I was almost a school shooter, Stark wrote. I am not a school shooter, because I didn't have access to guns. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. But people with guns kill lots of people. After to read some of his letter and introduced him on the program, she asked for his opinion on what should be done in order to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. I think we really need to have a hard look at the effect the guns have, Stark replied. Do we really need to have assault weapons? Do we really need to have people go buy an R-15 when they're not able to even buy a pistol because they won't pass the background check side note? The Second Amendment is part of the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Needs. Furthermore, the Florida shooter passed his background check to purchase a semi-automatic rifle because he had never been arrested, charged with a crime, or judged as mentally unfit. On top of that, there is the minimum age of 21 to purchase handguns, as opposed to a minimum age of 18 for rifles and shotguns, so pretty much that entire statement by Stark is baseless and without merit. But back to the interview of the would-be school shooter who claimed he ended up not being one because he didn't have access to assault weapons, he did speak about at least one thing which definitely holds merit and should be heeded a lack of love and outreach in our society from friends and family for troubled individuals, which is what he also credits, aside from no firearms access, for preventing him from acting out on his school shooting fantasies. Townall noted that prior to that segment on the program, Katie Tur set the false premise for viewers of having to choose which was more valuable to people, children or guns, as if both were mutually exclusive and a gun owner couldn't love children, or a loving parent couldn't own guns. This interview reeked of desperation on the part of MSNBC in its bid to further the gun control narrative, exploiting the history of an obviously troubled young man who considered, but never acted upon, shooting up his school as a depressed and suicidal teenager. Unfortunately for MSNBC, and the rest of the would-be gun grabbers in the liberal media, pro-gun advocates know how this game is played and aren't willing to give even an inch in response to their emotion-based harangues, as we know that control freaks will simply keep grabbing for more. Today it is the R-15-style semi-auto rifle. Tomorrow it will be the so-called high-capacity magazines most rifles and handguns come equipped with standard, and then they will move on to large-caliber bolt-action hunting rifles and shotguns, until we have slid to the bottom of the slippery slope and they have, piece by piece, implemented the total control over the population they so desire. Please share this story on social media so everyone can see how MSNBC just trotted out a self-proclaimed almost school shooter.